on over. I'm Chris, a recovering Yankee living in the South. If having company for coffee, dinner, or even a last minute popover sends you into a fit of panic, I can show you a few tips for being a great host or hostess anytime, day or night. So tune in, take notes, and learn to be fearless in saying, come on over. Today, we're talking about the mailbox, and here's why. What is the first thing your guests see when they are coming to your house for dinner or coffee or whatever it is you're doing? Right here, has the address on it, they know where to turn, the driveway is there. So when your mailbox is the first thing people see, it might be nice to make it look pretty. And if it looks pretty from the very start, they know they're in for something special. So this is where we're working today. We're doing many things in this area and I'm actually gonna be working with one of the homeowners who lives here and can help me get this settled. So we're gonna build up the wall that we have around here, the box. We're gonna throw in some leveling. We wanna get it level if at all possible. There's a drainage ditch over here. We don't want our plants to go into the drainage ditch. And then we're gonna fill it up with soil and we're gonna plant beautiful things and then we will be done and it will be so worth it. So stick with us. We measured two feet out from both sides and then it's back as far as we could so we could avoid some runoff here. We were up against the pavement here, so we let that guide our first row of border bricks. The leaves on this side provided a natural mulch and a weed block. The soil was ideal for planting. The other side was, shall we say, less than ideal. A level flower bed is a happy flower bed. I just made that up. Digging, digging. Oh look, a cement slab, not natural mulch. Never forget your kneeling pad. Save those kneecaps. Some of the soil was easy to turn over with a simple shovel. Some of it, not so much. This is the exciting part. Let the beautification begin. Of course, that requires more digging. Polytone is a great fertilizer for anything you want to plant. I always have a bag of it on hand. Soil conditioner is just a finely ground pine bark. It amends your soil and works as a mulch. I highly recommend it for level flower bed. You always want to immediately water in your newly planted flowers and shrubs and be generous. Don't wait until the next day because it might rain. Have your watering can ready and give those thirsty plants a drink. That way you won't jolt awake in the middle of the night hearing them gasp in the distance. You're welcome. Well, the mailbox area is done for today. We have a little bit of tweaking to do, but the basic outline of what we wanted is happening. At the back of the mailbox here, we have this beautiful fluffy looking shrub. This is called a Cryptomeria globosa. It is a perennial, meaning that it will stay green all year long. It will come back and get bigger every year. We hope this is a dwarf variety. It did not have a tag with it, so fingers crossed that it is, which means it will stay on the shorter side. It'll get fluffy and big, and it will help with runoff here at the back of the mailbox. Just to the side of this, in the back corner, we have a German bearded iris. Isn't it beautiful? This is called Sugar Blues, and it wants full sun. In fact, all of the flowers in this flower bed around the mailbox take full sun, and that's why they're here. This iris is already a really good size, and it will continue to double and triple and add more blooms each summer. Now back towards me, and then directly across, are white daisies. You can't see them yet because they're just in their initial growing stage, but they will produce these wonderful stalks of beautiful white petaled flowers. And they will double, triple, quadruple over time and even try to take over this flower bed. They will be probably from knee to waist high and never let you down. I'm gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. They attract butterflies, and perhaps even hummingbirds, and so we love them for that reason. Now down here by the actual mailbox, these are called Mexican Heather. 
I love this annual because even though it is an annual, meaning that it will not return next year, it gets really wide and it never lets me down in its shape, in its form, and it will kind of brush against the mailbox and really fill in that space. Absolutely beautiful. It also provides some great winter interest because even though it loses its blooms, it stays uniform in its shape and turns this wonderful sandy brown. And if it snows, it holds the snow and it's absolutely lovely. Now finally, right here in front of the mailbox is a yellow lantana. Lantanas in the Mid-South can be perennial, particularly this variety, but they usually are not. This one we're gonna hope comes back. We're gonna give it a chance. I've had a lot of them return and been very happy with them. It is low to the ground and will kind of go wide across the front here where the mailman comes by. It attracts wonderful pollinators and so also a great thing to have up here. And what we have up here in our color scheme is a white, yellow, and purple. Always good combinations. Now you might have noticed that I put some rocks in here because it hasn't filled in yet. It looks kind of puny, but until then we'll put some rocks in here and make it look pretty. And it does, and it will be pretty all season long. So this is a great combination of flowers for full sun and I highly recommend it. So when you're thinking about hospitality and you're having guests come to your house, we've got your mailbox covered. Remember, it's the little things that make people feel special and make them feel welcome in your home. We'll see you next time. And we may plant some more irises another time. It's lovely. We have a car coming. And an outdoor karate class across the street. Door slamming, a dog barking, maybe a birthday party. Yeah, the times. Come on over. Now go make someone feel special today.